Okay, it's a slight change in tactic now. I've been using a, an old favourite of mine, a Toby 28 gram, um, for a couple of days now, and it's been fantastic. A lot of fish, nothing sizeable. Um, but today I've been out for two hours and nothing. And it's always that sort of danger. You can get a bit too reliant on a lure. I perhaps should have started, you know, switched earlier. So I've just popped on just a fairly standard hard plastic, silver and black. And I'm hoping that it's going to be indicative of the uh, of what's being munched on under the surface. Well, we'll soon find out. So I'm going to try and get around the activity. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can just head on straight through the birds and the the fish but it does tend to spook them so I'm trying to go along the side and then use the wind and tide and drift me down because I've got quite a light the lure is quite light I'm guessing it's about 20 about 18 grams I suppose so I need to get quite a cast so excuse me let's get going This is why if you get a, a kayak for bass fishing, make sure it's a decent fiberglass one, because they give you the speed, especially when you're heading into wind. Right, let's try this. There the birds are behind me. But as you can see, oh, fish right in front now. Oh, oh I'll get a knock. Oh, I'm on. <laughs> Well, they won't count this one. Little baby bass. I think you can hear the uh, lure rattling. So, there you go. One release baby bass. Let's see, there's another. Has he got a big brother under there? So it does pay to change lures. I mean, that was that first or second cast. There's a lot of weed here today. Oh, fish, they're still here. The birds have gone. You can see the tails hopping in into the surface. So, isn't that funny? Not interested in the, the dropping lure. One thing about dropping lures like the Tobies and the uh, Dexter's wedges is often they'll take them. Oh, I saw that one take them. <laughs> Lost. Oh! <laughs> Wow, that was a gain on the surface, it's about to lift it out of the water. Okay, fish released. So, come on fish, fish, fish. I don't know if you can see the silvery sheen on the water in front of me here, really close in. Extend out. That's oil. Generally, it's, it's fish oil. You'll hear me going on about this time and time again. Follow the birds, follow the oil, and you won't go far wrong if you're bass fishing. 
Come on, come on, there's gonna be a fish this time, come on. Slow retrieve. Fish on. She's a bit bigger. Okay, take that back. Okay, well that was uh, an amazing experience. So I've been, as I mentioned, I've been using one type of lure for the last three days. Perfect fishing conditions. Caught a few fish. Today two hours, not a fish. Switch lures and literally just a fish every flipping cast. It's gone mad. Um, had an almighty tangle. And I just wanted to show you this is this stuff here. So these are off cuts of braid. And when when you've got really good fishing on, it's tempting just to put it on the deck and we'll get round to it later. But please make a point of uh, putting it into your lure case or any other special compartment so it really does end up at home. You know, your lure is your most expensive part of your kit in all probability. They're not going anywhere, are they? So put any discarded braid in with your lures and get rid of it safely when you get back home. Um, the other thing you'll notice on the deck, I always carry these things. It's simply because if I get a hook in my skin, I can cut it out, you know, quickly and easy without having to stretch around into my bag behind me trying to pull out fish and tackle. And secondly, it's great for disgorging fish if you do need it. So, um, right, the battery is about to die, and I'm going to go on and have a hopefully a bit more of the same. It's just one of those beautiful, beautiful balmy evenings. Um, but you can just see that now. But I'll carry on filming till the video, till the battery goes dead. So let's see what happens. Um, as you'll know, Tiss um, is an activity starting all over the place. And I think sometimes you get different sized fish in different shoals. At least that's one of, uh, what one of my mates tells me. So let's see if we can find some different sized fish. Notice the oily surface. No smell though, no odour. Lovely sea smell, but I can't smell the oil today. You know, sometimes you come out and the oil, it's just like somebody's tipped a drum of cod liver oil over. So nothing happening here, but the birds are now moving down that end of the beach. So I've got to catch up, haven't I? Well, they don't go for miles. No. 300 meters. But what I'm going to do here 
I'm going to troll, pop a lure out behind me, paddle up gently, rather than go down there too quickly. So we've hold plastics, wallop the lure out, get some speed up. Oh my goodness, the weed here is unbelievable. I guess the bad news, the good news, there's so many bait fish on the surface, it's untrue. So I'm going to hang about these bait fish. My goodness. They, look, I've said about oil. Can you see in the water? And it appears to be as well something else in here. So I'm going to try a slightly different technique. I'm going to try and get around this, uh, let's say, the activity. I'm assuming there's a shoal of fish underneath these birds. What I want to do then is use the wind and the tide to drift me down into the birds. And I've got quite a light um, hard plastic. It's a relatively inexpensive one. And I'm hoping that I can get a a nice cast bring a fish in let's try here it's a different type of fish I've got to be quiet now because they're coming close oh yeah fish on Oh, oh, fish off. <laughs> oh, fish on. <laughs> oh, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, I think it's only a small one, but he's put up a lovely fight. So that's funny, isn't it? I've been using... Um... Oh. bad size oh yeah he's a keeper it's about 45 centimeters isn't that funny all that time I've been using a Toby today and nothing and all of a sudden this one turns out 